talent, depth, experience. That definitely defines the Pac-12 conference. Um, last year, we had one of those. <laughs> we had talent. Uh, we, we didn't have depth, and we did not have experience. And we just could not be more excited this year because we have all three. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, these young women did amazing last year. And, you know, to be um, in the top 25 most of the year and second round NCAAs is, is definitely um, good, but it's definitely also not our standards. So we always do a, a joke. Do you guys want the joke this yeah. year? Okay. So, um, all right. So uh, elderly couple, Monty and Esther, okay, in their 80s. Tradition, every year for their wedding anniversary, they go to the state fair. Every year, Monty asks Esther if he can ride the helicopter. Every year, Esther says, no, it's too expensive, and $50 is $50. So finally, you know, it's this year, they're, they're in their, I think Monty's 86, and he's like, Esther, please, I, this is probably my last state fair. Can I please ride the helicopter? And Esther says, no. Fifty dollars is fifty dollars. But this time the pilot overheard them and he comes over and he says, Hey, I'll make you a deal. I'll let you ride for free as long as you don't make a sound. If you guys make a sound, then you're gonna have to pay. Monty's like, please, Esther, and Esther acquiesces. So they get in the helicopter, they take off. So of course, what does the pilot do, right? Loop de doo, three sixties, he's all over the place. Not a peep. Lands, goes to Monty, man, you know, I tried everything to get you guys to say something and Monty says, well, when Esther fell out, <laughs> I almost said something, but $50 is $50. So the point of that story is, you know, for our consistency at ASU, I mean, everybody usually has a sellout point. And for our team, you know, we don't. And it's who we are that, that really speaks to, that's our secret sauce at ASU. You know, no matter what, I mean, the players kind of come and go. We do have amazing talent. Um, right now, but you know that's that's kind of what we rely on. So, questions? Okay. So before we get to questions, I do want to introduce ASU SAT Rodriguez, who's in the back over there. If you need anything, and now ooh, we'll ooh. open it up for questions from the media. Please remember to identify yourself and wait for a microphone. I got more jokes. If you don't have any questions. <laughs> well, I mean, at least Woodward Pact Old Network. First of all, I can't believe you've been at Arizona State for 21 years. They're amazing. And I want to know how you look exactly 22. the same. This 22. is your 22 now. Yeah. Uh, how do you look exactly the same as when you did 22 years ago? Seriously, like, you look exactly the same. You're awesome. Thanks, Elise. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Actually, my hair is probably better now because some of those, those 90s hairdos were pretty brutal. Uh, for your program, though, and it, it has where you inherited the program to where it is two decades later and like you said last year you weren't you weren't to full strength but you guys managed to get to the second round of the tournament and all those things why what is it that you have as a coach as a system as a program that no matter what your team is extremely competitive it's the type of people that we recruit so it, it's what I spoke to in, in my introduction at least thank you um, it's our staff it's the culture it's the type of people that we that I that we choose to that I choose to work with you know, I have an incredible coaching staff. And then the young ladies that we choose are, are, we're very selective. And it is very much who they are before what they do. Our, our, our saying is performance character before performance measures. And so that's, we look at that really hard in the recruiting process and I think it shows up. You know, it shows up with um, how amazing these are, these young ladies are in uh, their competitive excellence. Hi guys. Uh, Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Actually, for the players, can you guys talk just about what you think your hunger level is this year and hunger for what? Um, I think uh, we didn't do as well as we wanted to last year. And uh, this off season, we really focus on getting back to uh, Sun Devil defense and making shots and stuff like that. So um, I think, and also building our culture from last year, and we really take pride on our culture. Um, yeah, like what she said, um, just being a senior, uh, and all of my seniors, we have four now, um, just bringing the sense of urgency, and because uh, we know we want to do better. 
Farley, Kiana, Riley High, Tammy Blackburn at Pac-12. <laughs> uh, Charlie, anytime you have 10 players that come back who played in the last 10 games, it, there's always you know, the saying about experience speaks volumes. Um, how can you guys be doing a little bit more and, and maybe be a little bit more dynamic with that experience? Might we see something a little different or the same feisty competitive team that is always ASU? Oh, you might see something different. Oh. I'm not going to tell you what, but um, <laughs> I mean, we just, we have a lot of options, you know, and, and we can actually practice this year. <laughs> I mean, like last year, I mean, we just, we had to, we compromised. I mean, we did really well because of who they are, right? Because of who these young women are, but we had to compromise a lot of what we like to do in terms of just really being a, a dominating team. So we're, we're excited. Hey guys, uh, Ann with the Pac-12 Network. Charlie, the veterans that you have back um, obviously have spoken volumes for you, and if, if everyone stays healthy, off we go. Any of the youngsters uh, that you have coming in, not a lot of freshmen, but any of the youngsters coming in, where are you already seeing some adjustments being made and perhaps an ability to count on them early on in the season? Oh, our freshmen can play. <laughs> well, yeah. well talk, we, talk to me. You guys yeah, jump in, too. Absolutely. Thank you. I mean... Um, we have four freshmen. They all are going to play. Okay. They are all going to play. They all are going to be impact players for us. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot like actually Riley's class, you know, the junior class we have now. You know, they all came in and, and everyone's like, wow, oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, we have um, um, Iris Junio comes from Spain, you know, coming in off a, a great summer MVP of the U20 championships gold medal. Um, just very versatile, dynamic guard, um, can do a little bit of everything. Taya Hansen from Canada uh, also competed for her country this summer. Um, is just <laughs> college ready. Okay, beep test. We do the beep test. It's a little conditioning test. We do gauge it. Yep. First day, um, first weekend, summer, she set our all-time record ever. Wow. And she came back in the fall and she broke her record. So, you know, we have freshmen that are, are, you know, I mean, they're a little overwhelmed. I mean, you know, they got some stuff to learn, but uh, strong, fit, college ready, which is half the battle, as everybody in this room knows. So, you know, Taya looks great. Jade Van Hefty, 6'1 wow. uh, forward, same thing with her fitness and her strength. I mean, just, I mean, off the chain. Both those two made our, our elite status fitness-wise. We have a, a special... They didn't get the playbook in a few things. <laughs> They're not up on the wall yet, but fitness-wise, they were up on the wall. Um, and Jade has uh, played for the same team, club team, as Sophie Bruner. Uh, she's very under the radar because she hurt her ACL and her parents held her out of club and everything just so she could get strong and healthy and ready to play for us because she committed really early. Um, and then Jamie Luetta, uh, she's had a sister at Oregon. She has a sister right now at Gonzaga, and uh, she's a really talented combo guard. So, and they can all shoot. Hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> Cindy Brunson, Pac-12 Networks. Uh, Riley, this is for you. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Thank you. Uh, my source in Tempe tells me that you have been working so hard on strength and fitness that you actually asked for a larger size short <laughs> this year. <laughs> What's up with that? Um, just off season, um, I didn't go home. I wanted to stay in Arizona and get stronger and work on my fitness level and um, little things in my game. And so um, I really took pride in that in, my, in the off season and I worked on that. And so. When you check your list of what you wanted to improve on over the summer, what have you already checked off? Uh, definitely my three point shooting and uh, really been focusing on defense though. So. And Kiana, you don't get off the hook. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Good. Of course, everybody knows you can shoot the heck out of the three-point shot. You proved that last season. But what folks in this room may not know is your ability to dance. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I have video proof great. of golf cart karaoke oh. in Tempe. Yeah. Are you the best dancer on the team? Ah, that's a hard one, because a lot of us are dancers. <laughs> um, I'd say I'm up there with Kiki. Okay. Kiki, yeah. Okay. yeah. And how does dancing and the camaraderie and the locker room help you guys on the basketball? Well, it just helps us, you know, get loose, get rid of anything, and it just helps us relax and connect with each other. So, and it's also a really fun thing to do before, 
practice or games. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Charlie. Joan Bombasini, Pac-12 Networks. Um, you know, I know you pretty well, but I've never seen you more confident. I mean, to be frank, which I like. I really like that. So knowing that you've got a lot of players coming back, your one thing has always been for you guys, and correct me if I'm wrong, is your defense and your head on, you know, your hat on defense. But you said there's some things that maybe in your toolbox that have changed Maybe with the players returning, your new kids coming back, I need to know more what's going to change with <laughs> ASU. I'm not telling you, Joan. Come on now. Yeah, no. I mean, okay, I'm going to ask we, the we players because no. the players are no, going to. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, they're not going to tell you anything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, everybody, I, I, you know, I think, I think every top program in the country hangs their hat on defense. I do. I think we play a more aggressive Maybe style. Maybe not like yours, though. Well, you know, I mean, we like to win. You know, everybody thinks, oh, Charlie loves defense. Charlie loves to win, right? We love to win. So, you know, that's the constant that we know we can bring every game. You know, that's where without the depth last year, I mean, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't do everything that we wanted to do. And we'll be back to being able – we might be more diversified than we've been because we have so much talent and depth. But, yeah, we're going to be, I hope, an amazing defensive team. You know, but our top teams, our teams that have made deep runs in the tournament, Breon January, Diamond Simon in the backcourt, right? I mean, our best teams have been great offensive teams. They've had great field goal percentages. You know, they've been had very, very efficient. Um, so, you know, we feel like we, we have a team like that this year. You know, that's going to be great on both sides of the ball. Um, and we're going to have a lot of options. And, uh, you know, and, you know, Riley, I mean, yes, you know, we, we know. I, th I think the thing that, that we, we have these unselfish players that don't care who gets the credit. And so they are willing to just dig down and play great defense for 40 minutes and share the ball. And, you know, that's, I think, what we're known for. You know, maybe we don't tell, hey, Keanu, you shoot 50 times, you know. And, yeah, you're an All-American, but what did we – accomplished together so um, you know we're just we're just really excited about um, having options <laughs> this year you know and, and being being that being like some of the teams in the past that have been able to make those deep runs and if everybody remembers if Diamond Simon hadn't got hurt those teams probably would have been final four teams you know we went on those runs without our leading scorer starting point guard so you know we're we are we're very excited for okay can I follow just with the players so a month and a day from now, you're going to play a pretty good team. Uh, hard to believe. It's a <laughs> month and a day at, with Baylor. Are you guys – I mean, I know you, you win the day and you work on every day, mm -hmm. but what do you guys have to do to beat Baylor? And I know that's the first game coming out of the gate. What, what are you working on as a team? Because I know you're thinking about – We have incarnate word on Tuesday that okay, week. Thank you very okay. much. <laughs> <laughs> it's our second game, so we – have a little bit of a tune-up game. Okay. Don't yeah, tell but we're them talking that. about Baylor. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys have to do? Well, we have to take every practice, you know, seriously and just control, just focus on the controllables, like controlling effort, um, rebounding, just, you know, everything that we can control. Uh, I think this last month is important for us and to keep building from where we are right now and just taking practice by practice and focusing on team and our culture. You know, you, Charlie, you really talk about because you have some good players and freshmen. I asked one of the other players this. So, Riley, it's, you know, you're down crunch time. Which one of those are gonna, that you can count on now is going to step up as a, one of your new freshmen? Who do you count on right today? you got a game right now, end of the game. Who's going to step up? I think they all have a chance to step up. Come on now. <laughs> I think that's a good answer. Really? You would say, okay. It doesn't always work out like that. No, it doesn't. But today, yeah. you I mean. You really think that much. That's, that's saying something. That's why Charlie was smiling. Yeah. Okay. okay. I usually smile. Yes, thank you, Cindy. And, and can, if I can just fill everybody in, does everybody know on November 11th we're playing University of Baylor's on ESPN? 
Um, and it, it's a, um, it, the game is twofold. Uh, first of all, it is a um, game to celebrate Native American culture traditions, but more importantly, their love of basketball. Um, the passion for basketball on the res is incredible. Um, and to give you a sense, the 6,500 beautiful, 6,500 seat arena, amazing arena that we're gonna play in, they've never pre-sold a ticket and they sell out every single high school game at Window Rock High School. That's how much they love the game of basketball. So it's you know, gonna be completely sold out. I mean, we're pre-selling, we're like, hey, if you wanna go to this game, you better buy a ticket now because it's gonna get flooded the day of the game. So we're shining the light on that. And uh, we have four guest coaches, all who played for ASU women's basketball, all with amazing stories that I'd love to talk to people about. I don't know if we have time today. If we do, I'll talk about it. Um, and then the other big part of the game is it's our salute to service game as well. It's on Veterans Day. And um, we're going to celebrate all of our troops, um, current and past, but we are putting a huge emphasis and celebration on Vietnam veterans. There were over 40,000 Native American Vietnam veterans. And everybody in this room knows that none of our veterans from Vietnam got a proper welcome home. So what we're doing at this game is we are going to give the Native American veterans a proper welcome home. So it's, it's we're, I mean, we're, Super excited about it, it should be really powerful. Um, so lots of moving parts just with all that. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a site visit um, Monday with ESPN and the people up there and the Veteran, uh, veteran Center. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot for our university. I mean, Arizona State Athletic Department, you know, obviously cares about women's basketball, they care about all their sports. So we are, it's a bit of a cost to get everybody up the hill it is a, it's a good five hour drive. Um, so, um, but it's gonna be a once in a lifetime event. It's gonna be an amazing experience. And I just wanna share this with you. So Rinaldi Basente, who's one of our guest coaches, who's in our hall of fame, um, who's dedicated her life to running camps and clinics uh, um, in reservations, mainly in Arizona, but uh, across the country, basically to show young people how they can use basketball as a vehicle to create opportunities in life. She's dedicated her life to that. She says to, to us, she goes, Charlie, this is going to be the greatest thing that has ever happened to us. Wow. I know, I mean, I got goosebumps when she, I mean, like I, I think there's probably been plenty of great things, that, but that's how much this game is gonna mean to her community. So it'll be, be special. Uh, yeah, back here, Ben Parker from uh, GoldenBearReport.com. Uh, Cal's taking on UConn later this year. You guys got Baylor to start in the non-conference. Given how tough the Pac-12 is, just how much does it help you to prepare for the Pac-12 by playing a quality at a conference opponent like Baylor so early in the season? Right. That's a great question. We have four BCS schools in November. We play Baylor on the 11th, then we play at Arkansas, then we play Louisville and Vegas, and then we've got Alabama at home. So we should be prepared. <laughs> that was a joke. but. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, so I, I do think it's really important to play a tough schedule. We've always, I mean, you guys that have been around, I mean, we, you know, we're always playing a really tough schedule. I mean, I think you have to be a little careful now. I mean, I, I, I wasn't planning on Louisville. That just, we just got matched up with them in Vegas because I thought we had a pretty tough schedule. But it, it absolutely is going to show, um, you know, our freshmen this year, okay, this, this is the standard. Like, you know, where are we at? You know, if we're not beating them in November, this is where we need to get to uh, by the time we get to conference. Kevin Dan at Pac-12.com. Hate to ask such a trivial question. I'm not much of a sneakerhead, but those shoes are amazing that you guys have on. <laughs> Just curious, what are those shoes? What do you guys think about them? And, Coach, what do you think of your team's get-up? Um, we were wearing the Hardens, so we got them last year. So, we got a lot. You guys got about how many pairs yeah, of Hardens? Maybe like five, five six. six. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Uh, just what? Well, I'll, I'll plug Adidas. I mean, Adidas has been, you know, incredible for us in terms of, you know, their shoe technology and how they've, uh, you know, taken care of our team. And, and I think the players really love, um, and, the, you know, the colors. And, yeah, we just, yeah, I mean, you know, gear and food. And they're happy, right? <laughs> um, any other questions for Coach? Uh, 
Well, I think, I mean, I think we've talked a little bit about it and I think, you know, we've said it, but it's, it's just, you know, we're, we're not just guard you, you know, I mean, we, we are collectively a unbreakable, um, unstoppable, amazing group of young women, you know, and, and, uh, that's how, that's, that's who we are striving to be every day, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I, I think every team defines itself a little bit, you know, and I know I do appreciate Joan's comments about our defense, you know, because that's, you know, again, all the top programs in the country, whatever style they play, it's, it's a good defense. But, you know, we want to be, you know, not just that, and we're not. Last question over here. Gerald Coward, HoopFeed.com. Um, given the trajectory of the Pac-12 women's basketball over the past five years, I mean, it's incredibly competitive, and given your experience uh, with the conference, um, can you talk a little bit about what it takes for a coach to remain uh, competitive in such a cutthroat atmosphere, especially, I mean, you know, with Oregon State with their three towering players and other teams coming up? You know. Yeah, I think in any industry, not just coaching, but we're all replaceable, right? So, you know, same thing that we teach our players. I mean, you just, you got you to gotta keep getting better. You know, you got to keep learning. You got to keep growing. You got to keep working. Um, you know, it, it, for all of us, you know, and, and uh, you know, and, and I think I'll end with what I started was and stay true to who you are. Um, anybody see The Star is Born? Yeah. yeah, good movie, right? Okay, so we'll kind of, because I know we're going to wrap up, right? We're wrapping up? I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm wrapping up, but we can take more questions. Um, I had my one, my annual date night, so we had our one, once in a year yeah. date night. Um, no, <laughs> seriously. Quinn, my youngest son, is like, good job, Mom. I think last time you had one, we needed a babysitter. And he's 14, so that was sad. But we went on one, and we saw that movie, and it's a movie about songwriters, and it's, it's all about, um, you know, um, ba basically staying true to who you are. You know, and it's also about having something to say. So, you know, I'll just say that I think if we stay true to who we are, we're, we're going to have something to say this year.